So we were in my 72 El Camino, my hot rod, and we were parked in Huntington Beach in a park. And we, I had a mirror in, on my lap full of cocaine. That's when I got arrested. The police showed up. We're in the car. All of a sudden, flashlights hit. And they said, I, all I remember is the words, don't move. And I saw a gun to my left. My name is Jimmy Osborne. I'm from Orange County, California. And I served um, my three-year term in the United States Army. So he, he reached in the car, the cop, pulled the evidence, the cocaine mirror out, got us out of the vehicle, searched the whole car for more. And then he said, now you have a choice. You can be a man and you can take the fall for this and let her drive your car home. Or you can say, it's not yours. I'm gonna arrest you both, impound your car. And I, I said, no, it's not hers, it's mine. Let her go in my car. He said, good move, good decision, young man. And that's what happened. And I ended up in Beach Jail. I grew up in Southern California in the city of Whittier up until my ninth grade year. Then my family moved from Whittier to Orange County. I was introduced to Orange County as a freshman, um, was a very rebellious person, got thrown out of high school in my senior year um, and was arrested at that point for um, cocaine possession and I was court ordered to either join the military or do two years prison time. 100% peer pressure. My neighbors I met on our block we lived, there was of course three guys that went to the same high school. So when we first moved in, they came and met us. We were all the same age. And they, uh, first thing they had was brought, brought out marijuana joints. You know, and I, of course, wanting to be part of the group to get along, to be liked. Um, I just went along with the drug use and uh, it grew from marijuana all the way up to the level of LSD. I met Debbie in 2000, the year 2000. We lived together. I was the vice president of a mortgage company. I embezzled quite a bit of money, close to $2 million. So again, the drugs, the drugs. She begged me, stop, please stop. You're breaking my heart. I loved her very much. I wouldn't stop and I got arrested for embezzling the money in 2007 and uh, did 11 years in state prison. I got released in 2018. When I got out, life had to start all over again. I went back to cocaine, lost everything again, which brought me up to this point, 2020. My dad and mom said, come live with us because I was going to be homeless. The Salvation Army came into play in my life. I applied for the county to get housing as a veteran. I didn't realize what my benefits were. They contacted me and Veterans Village next door, which was awesome, said, come see the facility. I was amazed when I saw it. And I walked into a brand new apartment and they said, your rent's only 270 a, a month. I said, I, I didn't hear you right. Do, what? <laughs> they said, it's 270 a month. I said, awesome. They said, and the Salvation Army's next door, they have a lot of benefits. You might want to check it out, which I did. And when I walked into here and I said, you guys, they said, you can come here three times a week, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and get a box of fresh food. And all of a sudden now I have food, I have an apartment. I went to church on service here at 11 in the morning, the service. I met Major Neal and his wife, Rubina. They showed me the love. I, I couldn't pay my rent, even the 270. I came here a month ago and I went to Pastor Neal. He was in the hallway of the office and I was overwhelmed and he, I, I wept in the, in the lobby and he comforted me. And he said, we're gonna pray, don't worry. Everything's gonna be all right, Jimmy. And he prayed, he said, we're gonna help you with your rent. Don't worry. His wife, Rabina, came up to me and, and hugged me. And she said, we're here for you. And they've been helping me ever since, showing me the love of Christ, showing me the love of forgiveness, just calling me part of their family. This is what I experienced. I'll never forget it. I felt finally peace.
and the people that donate and give their resources, their money, their time that are connected to the Salvation Army, I would say to all those people, thank you. Thank you. I'm not homeless because of you people, you givers, you donators, you people that are part of the um, administration, administration here. I will say this, more blessings will come upon you than you could ever imagine because of the help you're giving to people. 